Hello, good evening and welcome to News at 10 live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. I'm Stephen Enti. And ahead tonight, the two leading political parties, MPP and NDC, commit to the process leading to the disbanding of political vigilante groups in the country. And former Deputy Energy Minister and MP for Adanse Asukwa, Katie Hammond, urges government to abrogate all block contracts signed between 2006 and 2016. Also tonight, uh, Ghana to consider venturing into the manufacture of lithium batteries. Also news coming in, six illegal miners arrested in the underground workings of Shanzi Mining Ghana Limited. These are many more coming up over the next 30 minutes. I'm Stephen NT. You can join us via, uh, you can follow our live stream on Facebook and on 3 newscom Let's first start with the major news highlights of the day. The parties agreed that vigilantism is inimical to Ghana's democratic system and must be eradicated. The New Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress sign a communique to show their commitment to the process of disbanding vigilantism from Ghana's politics. The two political parties, however, have varied views on how it should be done. If we see anybody doing any of these things and arrest is not possible, we will shoot to kill, not to maim. These were the words of the head of security at the Ghana Grid Company, Gridco. Major Lawrence appear retired as he sounds a stern warning to some persons who allegedly attempted burning some pipelines belonging to Saras Oil Services Limited in Tema. If they haven't done the work, we should abrogate, give the blocks to sensible, reasonable companies which are prepared to do what it takes to discover oil for Ghana. Former Deputy Energy Minister under the Kufo regime, Katie Hammond, calls on government to abrogate all block contracts signed between 2006 to 2016. The Adansi Asukwa MP has raised concerns on work on the 14 oil blocks, which he says have failed to go beyond the initial exploration stage. UN Human Rights Commissioner warns attacks on civilians and civilian infrastructure in Libya could amount to war crimes. With some 47 people, including civilians, killed, Michel Bachelet said all parties to the conflict must make every effort to protect civilians. Those were our major news highlights. Remember, you can follow our live stream on Facebook and on 3news.com. You can also hear me on 3FM 92.7. This is News at 10. Up next is a big one. Welcome back. Now, the New Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress, NDC, have signed a communique to show their commitment to the process of disbanding vigilantism from Ghana's politics. Uh, they, the two uh, political parties, however, have varied views on how this should be done. Martin Esiedu Date was at the meeting organized by the National Peace Council to set out the modalities on how to eradicate vigilantism. There has been a national outcry over the activities of party thugs and vigilantes which have dented Ghana's democracy following the Ayawaso West war gone by election violence which left some persons injured. Such groups affiliated to the two main political parties have caused chaos at by elections in the country, notably Etiwa, Chiripone and Talensi. Although President Akufuado has ordered the Attorney General to send a bill to Parliament to legislate a law over vigilantism, he has also agreed that both parties should meet to address the menace. After several correspondence from both parties, the National Peace Council called for the meeting aimed at taking a decisive step on disbanding vigilantism. In a communique signed by chairmen of both parties and witnessed, by the board chair of the National Peace Council, Professor S.K.B. Asante, the NDC wants political vigilantism to be eradicated in all its ramifications, whereas the NPP wants the focus 
to be on political party vigilantism in all its ramifications. After an, an open and exhaustive deliberation, the parties agreed that vigilantism is inimical to Ghana's democratic system and must be eradicated. With respect to the immediate focus of the mediation or dialogue, the NDC is of the view that it should be the eradication of political vigilantism in all its ramifications, while the NPP is of the opinion that the focus should be political party vigilantism in all its ramifications. Significantly, though, both parties agree to engage in deliberations aimed at, one, disbanding vigilante groups operating within political parties or for political purposes, two, prohibit the ownership, hiring, or utilization of such groups by the political parties or members thereof, and three, cooperating with state agencies and stakeholders in the total eradication of such groups or incidents of vigilantism in the country. It should be noted that the two parties are also committed to exploring other processes. The next meeting has been set for April 29. Right, so let's do some discussions on this. Adam Bona is joining us. Uh, Adam Bona is a security analyst. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you extremely for your, for your time. So do you get the sense that the NDC and the MPP, having started this uh, uh, process to disband the vigilante groups in Ghana, do you get the sense that they will see it through to the end? Well, yeah, good evening. Uh, I, I suspect so, yes, they will see it through. Uh, if you take into consideration the public uh, pressure and, uh, you know, they themselves, uh, if you look at from the side of the NDC, when uh, in front of their office, a member of the NDC was shot dead by a suspected member of the, of the NDC, it uh, makes me believe that, yes, they are likely to see it through. Uh, but we have to probably uh, remain optimistic, hoping that uh, what they are going to do would be something that would be beneficial to the whole nation. Mm, but Mr. Bona, the president has already started the legislative process. Uh, does this mean that really this meeting, having started after the back and forth between the two major political parties, uh, will be thrown off the table as a result of the president's uh, legislative processes? I, I doubt so. If you look at uh, the, the issue of they disbanding, what do you call it, political party militia and vigilantism, it's more of a moral uh, issue. But if you look at uh, from the point of view of the president, uh, he's, look at, he's looking at it and thinking that, you know what, let's strengthen the existing laws. If you ask me, I would say it's basically trying to strengthen the existing laws. But for me, I would say that uh, we don't really need another law to deal with political party targery. But, I mean, for the political party, it has to do with the uh, thinking that, well, we've got to go ahead and disband because the public, the general public, are supporters. Ghanaians are expecting us to do the right thing. And I want to hope that in their next meeting, they would look at the avenue to bring in Robin, the other, uh, you know, smaller or less known political parties, bring them onto the round table uh, to be involved in this whole discussions. Mm, let's look at the, the Peace Council as a mediator in the process. I quite recall the back and forth communication letters upon letters between the NDC and the MPP, mainly uh, because the NDC was in favor of a neutral arbiter, they call it. The National Peace Council. Do you, do you have the, that sense of trust that it is actually the institution to mediate this, or you would suggest other, another option? Well, I think that, well, the National Peace Council is capable. If you look at those who are in charge of the uh, National Peace Council, these are capable, able people. And so let's give them that benefit of the doubt. But I want to believe that, yes, they have the capable uh, minds, capable people to deal with, to mediate in this whole effort to disband political party vigilantism. But I am asking that other stakeholders be brought involved, especially 
from the chief imam's office. And I'm saying this because, you know, 95% uh, of the young people who are used to ferment trouble and who are members of this political party, militia, and uh, call it tag tax, are coming from our zongos. And so you cannot have any meaningful uh, disbandment of political party tagry, you know, in a, in, in a more civilized manner as they are tr attempting to do without calling upon the office of the chief imam to be part of it so that whatever deliberations that is ongoing, uh, he might have to call upon his imams at the various locations and the mosques all over the country mm -hmm. to let the young people know that, uh, you know, they will not be permitted to be part of this type of uh, activity in this country. And so, I mean, there should be short, medium and, you know, long term uh, processes put in place to disband uh, the militia or political party vigilantism in the country. I think well, these are some of the things I'm expecting. Right, Mr. Bonner, I, I, I'm not sure about your description, your suggestion that a uh, majority of the people uh, who are members of vigilante groups uh, are, come from the Zongos anywhere. I'm not sure of that. But uh, the NDC were told the national chairman, Samuel Fusuan Pofu, had to leave the meeting abruptly because of an invitation from the police CID, would you say this is a good sign? Well, I, I, well, the police CID would have to go ahead with its own work, but uh, I think that if that is the case, then they could have waited, but did uh, Samuel um, Ofosu um, Ampof, what time was he told about the invitation? Did he get the invitation there and there? Uh, he was given a 24 hour notice. If he was given a 24-hour notice, then I presume you should have informed the police that, you know, we have this, can I come on another day? And so let's not allow uh, his invitation by the police to mar uh, the beauty of the sittings mm -hmm. today. Is it, so is that it, we Mr. Separate... Bonner, Mr. Bonner, is it your impression that uh, this was just uh, another lay excuse to get out of the the deliberations, uh, because from the analysis you're making, he could have had the invitation a lot earlier than the time he left the the, the meeting. Do you think it's an excuse to get away? I don't have the full facts, so it would be difficult to say it's an excuse. Uh, probably I would have to look at this, uh, get some more information to be able to interrogate it, but That's uh, I want to think that it should, we should not, let's not uh, put the two of them together, let's separate them. If mm. we separate them, I believe it will, you know, help all of us so that mm. we separate what the disbanding political party militia meeting and then also the force invitation uh, with the CID so that we are able to deal with them, you know, independently. All right. Finally, uh, Mr. Bona, I, I we spoke to both the NDC and the MPP. The impression we get, uh, the M NDC says that they they were not too, you know, excited. They were a bit disappointed because their key suggestion was to broaden the scope of this meeting, bring a lot more people on board, bring security agencies, bring interested parties like journalists, land guards, you know, because they believe that uh, these uh, groups or stakeholders are all a key part of the process which is needed to uh, totally disband uh, political groupings. The MPP says, well, there was no excuse for, the, the, there was no need for this broad stakeholder engagement, the NDC suggests. So already we're getting uh, bits and pieces of disagreements coming from the NDC and MPP on structurally what the way forward should be. Uh, do you get the sense that we're going to Hit, 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 a, hit a dead end if we keep going on like this? Well, I, I want to believe that it's all part of every negotiation. So anybody who has done negotiations will tell you that it becomes tougher and you have to find a way to go through. And so as far as I'm concerned, I am also of the firm belief that other, stake, other people, uh, you know, other mm -hmm. uh, stakeholders, other P, you know, organizations, uh, or groups apart from the NDC and the MPP uh, should also be called mm. to come in. But I want to leave that to the Peace Council, the, 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 the chief uh, negotiating authority or organization, to probably look at the terms of reference and say, yes, it will be good, and let's bring this, let's bring that. But amongst the two of them, 
if we leave this to just the two of them, they are going to have, we are going to see argument, counter argument, mm. yeah. and pointless arguments, and this won't help us. So I want to hear from the Peace Council's point of view and say, yes, uh, we want to bring in other stakeholders, not the MPP, not the NDC, no, because they are in there. It is because of them the meeting has been called anyway. And so what do we expect? We expect to have argument and counter argument. So for me, I think let's hear from the Peace Council with regards to broadening, broadening the scope of work. Right. Uh, Mr. Bona, thank you extremely for your time. Adam Bona is uh, a security analyst. And I'm Stephen Enti. This is News at 10 live from the News Hub. You can also hear us on 3FM 92.7. And we're streaming live on our Facebook page. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, six illegal miners, uh, that's news just coming in. Uh, six illegal mining intruders have been arrested in the underground workings of the Shanzi Mining Ghana Limited, a company offering mine support services to the uh, Yenyeya and uh, Puputaba mining groups in the uh, Bane community. The six illegal miners were arrested at level two of vertical shafts too. They were arrested with sacks containing pilfered ore. Some of them uh, possess weapons meant to scare away workers of the company to pave way for their illegal businesses. The company has over the years suffered the activities of these uh, illegal miners who always use unauthorized ingresses to access their underground tunnels to steal ore. Most of them have encountered incidents of inhalation of blast fumes. In January uh, 2019, 16 illegal miners died after an illegal pit belonging to one uh, Kwesi Apia, also known as Kwesi Bantama, to access the company's underground caved in. The six illegal miners have since been handed to the police at the site for further investigations. They confessed using the illegal pit belonging to one Kofi Macho, to enter into the company's underground tunnels. And former Deputy Energy Minister under the Kufo regime, Katie Hammond, is calling on government to abrogate all oil block contracts signed uh, from 20, 2006 to 2016. The Adansia Sukwa MP has raised concerns on work on the 14 oil blocks, which he says has failed to go beyond the initial exploration stage. The Adansia Sukwa MP, Kobina Tahiru Hammond, who himself was not in the house tabled the question wanting explanations on the number of blocks awarded for exploration and how many have gone past initial exploration. Deputy Minister of Energy William Oreku Edo, in response, said the ITLO's ruling affected operations of some of the companies owning the blocks. One was relinquished, that is the offshore Accra contract area petroleum agreement initially operated by Tap Oil while five were affected by the International Tribunal of the Law of the Seas um, ruling. The five petroleum agreements affected by the ITLOS ruling include one, expanded shallow water tunnel block, two, the offshore southwest tunnel block, three, central tunnel block, four, south deep water tunnel block, and um, finally number five, southwest Sorpon block. These companies have had their initial exploration periods extended to cater for the time loss as a result of the it loss ruling. Work programs are therefore ongoing for most of them in the initial exploration period because of the extensions. He, however, is of the firm belief that the companies were still within the contract period assuring grants of an assessment being done by the Petroleum Commission. None of the remaining 13 companies um, have fulfilled its minimum obligations within the initial exploration period and no discoveries have been made as yet. However, they have carried out their obligations to different degrees. Some have reprocessed, uh, reprocessed the existing data, acquired new 3D seismic data, 
and some are preparing to drill exploratory wells while others have only reprocessed or still reprocessing their system data, Mr. Speaker. The Ministry of Energy um, with Petroleum Commission are reviewing dormant petroleum agreements and depending on the outcome, a decision will be made whether or not to abrogate these PAs. Second March 2006, you will, you will he signed listen. an agreement for gas up. Uh -huh. Oranto, second May. Oh, second May 2008. Yeah, this is the fact. Moment thereafter, and satisfied at Dancia Sokwa, MP faced off with the former energy minister under the Mahama administration, whom he blamed for the non-performance. I'm not singling out anybody. I'm going for a whole block. I mean, uh, wholesale, if they haven't done uh, the work, we should abrogate, give the blocks to sensible, reasonable companies which are prepared to do what it takes to discover oil for Ghana. Minister Sansa is saying that all of the companies are within their obligations and they, st they are still within the contract period, which is the seven-year contract period. What it means is that Within that period, the minister must be uh, asked to ensure that they are following their work obligation, they are meeting their requirements. Let's still stay in Parliament. Uh, the House has approved a $100 million uh, commercial agreement for the construction of a housing project uh, for the military. While the House unanimously approved the agreement, concerns have emerged on value for money on the contract which is yet to be done. Here is a report by Komla Kluche. Parliament received the defense agreement for the construction of the 100 housing units for the military earlier this year between the government of Ghana and the Poly Changda Overseas Engineering Company Limited of China for the execution of the housing project for the Ministry of Defense. Parliament's Committee of Defense and Interior presenting the report for approval by the House observed that the accommodation deficiency of the armed forces necessitated the urgent push, fundamentally an agreement to better the lives of the men and women in uniform. Nonetheless, fundamental issues have been raised on it. At the point of what they are supposed to do, they are supposed to construct 160 blocks of flats, one contractor, and they are taking only 20% of local contractors to support them. 160 blocks of flats, volume of work to be done by one company if there has been proper value for money, if there has been you know, other issues regarding the sole sourcing, we are putting a better value than what we have. And the fact that Ghana has ratified many protocols and amendments on the state of the environment and on climate change, I found it rather unfortunate that um, no green friendly to green or eco friendly technology found expression in the design of these houses. These accommodation, these are uh, these um, the project on accommodation is quite extensive, and it's across the uh, the length and breadth of this country. And it would have been encouraging to see the use of solar panels in the building and other eco friendly technology. I said that this is a very good deal. Mr. Speaker, we pray that the House would approve it, give our men accommodation. And Mr. Speaker, we also urge all the Honorable Minister of Defense and the Minister of Finance, Mr. Speaker, to again think about how we can do more of the same for military, for the police, who I suspect, Mr. Speaker, are in the same very nice circumstances. Concerns have been raised on the value for money assessment of the project, which government has admitted is yet to be done. Deputy Defense Minister Major Retired Derek Odro gave the strongest indication strict compliance with the law will be ensured in the execution of the project. So many ways you have to follow to make sure that the people have done a very good job. We are saying that before final payment, final payment, you are talking about retention. Retention might even be small. If we are saying we are not paying you until we make sure that necessary thing has been that the consultants have made adequate and proper investigation and uh, assessment before the final pay. You are talking about retention. Retention is a, a small amount. 
And that's how we'll wrap up with news at 10. Thanks very much for making time. We'll be out of the crew. Good night. There's more news at 3news.com.